All right, hey everybody. In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to use a gyro sensor in order to have our robots here move and turn in the direction that we want them to. And you're gonna find this is going to be way more precise than just kind of guessing and hoping it turns correctly. And it should be very helpful to you. And there's gonna be uh, three different programs that we're going to implement here. The first one is going to allow us to turn very precisely no matter what happens. And the second one will also allow us to do that um, as well, but it will be a bit more complex, but a little more accurate too. So you could choose which one you want to use with those. And it will look something like this. I want it to turn all the way around. But let's say there's something kind of blocking that. If I just have a normal turn, it's gonna just get caught, it's not gonna be good. But with my gyro turn, I could it's go, and then it still goes right there, right where I want it to. And the third program that we are going to implement is a straight line program where it will go in a perfectly straight line or close to perfectly straight line, regardless of any obstacles that it may encounter. So if I do that program, I'll go here, and I could I'll keep on going straight, regardless of what I do. So let's start programming and see how we can do this. So I am back in my tutorial project, and I've added some comments to all my programs, which is a very good habit to get into. It makes them more readable to others. And I'm just going to make a new program, and I'll call this gyro turn. And if I plug in my EV3, I have my cord right here this time. And I go down to port view, you can see that if I were to turn it, it has a value there. And that is just the angle that it's going at. So if I were to turn it to the left, it will start to go more positive, or, sorry, more negative. And if I were to go this way to the right, it will start to get more positive until I get to zero and then it will go like that. And this will allow us to use this data in order to make it go in the direction that we want. Um, one more thing, if you like, I've had a lot of problems with like plugging it in and then it starts to go up, even though it's not turning, it's perfectly straight. If that happens to you, what you want to do is you just want to unplug it and then plug it back in. And that should fix that problem. But always check that that is not happening because that has happened to me a decent number of times and not insignificant portion of time. So definitely check that. So to make our first turn here, what we're going to do is we are just going to get a simple move steering block and we're going to get a loop and that's all we are going to need. So if I set the loop there and I put the move steering inside and I just turn it on and I have it go in the direction that I want it to. So say I want it to turn right, that will turn all the way to the right. And if I want to turn left, that will go all the way left, but let's have it go right. And right now this will just keep on spinning forever. And I could change that. So I'm going to do, and I'm going to go to gyro sensor. And the gyro sensor measures two things, the angle, how far it's going, and the rate, the speed at which it is, uh, at which it is turning. For these tutorials, we are just going to stick with the angle. And now you can see our less than, our greater than. And all we want it to do is, let's say we want a 90 degree turn. We can have it turn until the gyro sensor measures greater than 90. We don't want it to be equals to 90 because it might just like skip over, it might not catch it, and then in that case, it'll just keep on going forever. But if we just have greater than, any times it reaches a greater than uh, 90, it will be good. So I'm just gonna plug this in. Actually, because it's returning, I'll download it. There we go. And let me find this here. And now, if I go to gyro turn, it will go like that. And it will work the same way where if I kind of hold it back, it will do that. But you can see that this is greater than 90. Like it's, if we were to put this in there and actually measure the amount of degrees, Start there, boom, boom, boom. 
boom, it goes out all the way up to 140, which is way bigger than 90. That's, that's not what we want. And the reason that happens is just simply the momentum makes it keep on moving. So you could tinker around with this, have your degrees be less than what you actually want and hope that you can get it there. It still will be reasonably accurate if you do it that way. But I'm gonna show you another way right now that will we'll start turning at a certain speed. Then as we get closer to it, it will slow down so that it is much more precise. So I'm just gonna get rid of this one right now. And we want to make a variable here. And this variable is going to be our desired angle. So let's call this target angle. And we'll be able to dictate what that is right here. And then we're going to get another variable out. And this one we want to read. So we actually haven't talked about tutorial or uh, variables in these tutorials yet. We've done constants, which are very similar, but not exactly the same. So I want to, there's two different ways we can do this here. We can write a variable, which is when we say we want target angle, we want that to be, let's say, 45. And when it runs through this program, that means that it will set target angle to 45. But let's say we want to use this value for something. This write function here will not be sufficient. We need another block that reads it. So we can write it here. And then if we want to read it, we just use this one right here and we drag it out. And we could use this data wire to pass that variable value into whatever we want. And there's also, we're using a numeric one right now, but if you want to do text, you should do that. Uh, logic, Boolean, true or false, uh, an array, which we haven't covered yet. So you could use those as well if we start to use arrays. Uh, but for this one, since it is a number, we are going to stick to numeric. Now, once I have that, I want to get a loop because I want it to keep on turning. And I am going to use my sensor box here to sense what angle it is currently at. So it will always be checking here. And then we are going to pass this in to a math block. And then I just want my move steering. Turn it to on. And we can move it over like that. Cool. All right, now we need all of these blocks to communicate with each other in order to have our steering start with a lot of power. But as it gets closer, it gradually gets down and down and down and down until it's right at the exact point and it's at zero. So that deceleration, instead of having, uh, happening after the turn like it did in our first program, it's happening while it's turning so that when it gets to the point, it stops. So we need to take this angle right here and let's say we start at zero and we want it to go to 90. We can take our target value right here and plug it into there. So that will start at, well, use 45. This is gonna start, actually, I'm gonna switch this to 90 just to show you how easy it is to change it. So anytime we wanna change it, we just plug in that value. And so we're gonna start, we want to go to 90, but when we start it, it is going to be at zero. So if I drag in the data wire from my gyro sensor, it'll be 90 minus zero. But then once it gets like halfway there, it's going to be 90 minus 45, and that will equal 45. You see it's gradually getting lower and lower and lower until it's 90 minus 90, and that equals zero. So if I take this and I plug it into speed, this will control how quickly it is moving so that when it gets closer to there the speed is going to decrease and even if it goes past negative speed on this turn will just cause it to turn the other way now the only problem we have right now is that this is in an unlimited loop so this will work if we just turn it. that's the only thing we want to do this will work great but you're probably going to want to do something after that so if we go here we can measure, we'll measure the gyro sensor and we'll measure the angle of it so that if it is greater than or equal to our desired angle, which right now just happens to be 90, but it might not be later. So let's take our variable 
and plug that in right there. If it is greater than or equal to 90, it will exit out of the loop. And you can see one of the advantages of variables right there. Like now, if I want to change it, rather than having to manually put in, let's say I want to go 45, and like I would have to put it in there, and I would have to put it in there. But if I just change it here, it will now change it on both of those when it reads it. So let's walk through this program before we test it out. So I have a variable here called target angle, and I'm making that be 90. I'm setting that variable to 90. Now this block is reading from that book. It is opening up the variable book and seeing, oh, target variable, that equals 90. Let me tell everyone else about it. So it goes into the loop, it measures the gyro sensor, and then we go into a math block. This math block is reading from that variable book right here, and it's saying, oh, this should be 90. And now it is subtracting whatever value is passed in through the gyro sensor block. Then it is outputting the result of that equation and passing it in via data wire to the power parameter. And that causes it to turn as long as the angle is less than or equal to uh, the variable target angle. And once the angle is greater than that, it will exit the loop and stop. So let's see if this works. I am going to download it and find it here. And I unplugged it before, but since we have this, it really shouldn't matter. I could kind of hold it and it'll be fine. So where was this? I should probably ex delete these programs here because I have a lot on here. Oh, that's in recent, so I want. There we go. Okay. And gyro turn. Let's see if this works. Great. And whoop, took a little while for it to exit there. But that's all right. So let's try this again. I'm going to kind of hold it. Whoa. Whoa. Went off a little bit there, but that's all right. Cool. So if you're having trouble with it exiting the loop, what you can do is you could just manually put this into like a little bit less. So if, if it's turning and getting to like 88, uh, you could just kind of get rid of this and just put 88 in there. And that will make sure that it will definitely exit the loop in time. Okay, so we have that. Now, and I just want to put that back in there. Boom. Now that we have that, let's make our robot go perfectly straight. So for this one, I'm going to make a whole new program because I think the, like the gyro turn could come in useful sometimes. So I might want to save that. And I will name this gyro straight. And this is gonna work pretty similarly actually, where we set an angle at the beginning and then we're always checking to see if it's at that angle and if it veers off a little bit, we just want it to turn. It's gonna work pretty similar to the line follower. So I'm gonna use another variable. And these variables will stay the same throughout the project. So if I were to go back here, I could check my variables. Like this is a variable throughout the project. So if you needed to use that for another program, you could. Uh, so that also means that I can't just name this target angle because it's being used for something else. So I'm going to add a variable and I will name this, which would be a good name for this, uh, straight angle. Boom. So we just want it when it first starts going, we want it to measure the gyro sensor and then we want that to write to the straight angle. So whatever it is at the very beginning, that's the angle that it will start at. You can kind of play around with this. Like say you wanted to move in a straight line at 45 degrees, you could just manually write that at 45 degrees. But for my program right here, I am just going to have it go wherever it starts at. And we need another loop. And we are just going to measure the gyro sensor again. And we are going to read from that variable. Actually, I can keep this out here. Can't I? Let's keep that out here. 
And we want to do a little math operation here. And we want to add a move steering block and just set that to on. So what's going to happen here is it's going to pick up the angle that it's at at the beginning, which in our case right now is going to be zero. But if you were doing this like in the middle of the program, it might be something different. So it will pass that angle in and then it will read from the variable. And we want that variable to uh, or we want the reading of this to measure the difference between the actual angle and the target angle, just like before. So let's say the target angle is, in our case, it's going to be zero. And let's say it starts to veer off a little to the right. That means that this would increase and we want it to go back negative. So if I put that into there and then the target angle right there, that would be this is zero and then this goes to let's say positive two positive three zero minus two is negative two and we just plug that into steering and so it will steer back to negative two until it's zero then obviously zero minus zero equals zero so that will be uh that right there and let's say we, like this started at 45 it'll work the same way so uh this will go this will read 45 and hopefully our angle would be at about 45, but let's say it, it went down to 40. 45 minus 40 equals five, so it will turn five, then four, then three, then two, then one, then zero, as it gets closer until it hits 45, and then it will be zero, and it will just move. Now, just like before, we are in this loop, and an unlimited loop is not what we want. So let's say we want to use the number of rotations. When we use the move steering block, that's really simple. We just change 45 rotations or 54 rotations. Great. We, it's a little different here. We need to use the motor rotation uh, block right here and just go down through rotations and it will only be one block. It doesn't really matter which one or one motor. So if I have B and C, let's just turn that to B. And then once the motor rotation is greater than or equal to five, it will exit the loop. Again, you don't want to do equals because like if it, something happens and it just skips over it, like you're not in a good position because it will just keep on going forever. It's a bit more convoluted than the move steering block, but it works exactly the same way. So this should work. Let's try it out. Download and tutorial gyro straight. And if I go like that, it goes right back. If I were to go the other way, and it stops after five rotations. So that is how you can use the gyro sensor for various tasks you may have around the robot field or just different things you want to do. I hope that was helpful and join us for our next tutorial, which we will be, I'm not exactly sure. It might be my blocks. It might be writing files. You'll have to tune in and find out. Uh, but thanks for watching and I will see y'all later. Later.